Good morning. Thank you for joining me, Pastor Zach Williams of Flat Creek Baptist Church here in Gainesville, Georgia. Today we're going to continue in the book of Acts and we're going to be looking at Acts chapter 12, verse 1 through verse number 5. Now before we go there, uh, I want us to go back to John chapter number 16. And I want you to listen to what the Lord Jesus says. He says, I have told you these things to keep you from stumbling. They will ban you from the synagogues. In fact, the time is coming when anyone who kills you will think he is offering service to God. They will do these things because they haven't known the Father or me. But I have told you these things so that when their time comes, you may remember I told them to you. I didn't tell you these things from the beginning because I was with you. You notice what Jesus says there. He says, there will come a time when anyone who kills you will think he's offering service to God. Well, those words must have really stung the heart of the disciples. I mean, imagine sitting in that upper room with the Lord Jesus Christ, and he's telling you of his own impending death, that he's about to go to the cross of Calvary and suffer for the sins of the world. And then he looks you in the eye, and he says, there's coming a day when those who kill you will think that they're offering service service to God. So in one blanket statement, he's saying to the disciples, there's coming a day where some of you may actually lay your life down for the cause of Christ. And indeed, we know that 11 of the 12 disciples, not Judas, Judas, of course, he he hangs himself. But the other 11 that were present with Jesus in the upper room, 10 of them died a martyr's death. And one of them was persecuted relentlessly, that would be John, but he died at an old age despite the persecution that he faced. And so all of these disciples actually do end up being persecuted and many of them die for the cause of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the first of them to die is going to be the apostle James, the John, the, the, the brother of John, the beloved. Now we think about that today, remember there was a time When Salome, the mother of of James and John, goes to Jesus and she says, you know, Jesus, I want my my sons to sit on the right and the left in the kingdom. And, And Jesus says, are you able to be baptized with the cup that I'm baptized with? And they say, we are able. And Jesus mentions the fact that there is coming a day where those two young men will suffer for the cause of Christ. And indeed, John and James will suffer, as I've already mentioned, and James here in Acts 12 is going to be the first disciple to give his life for Jesus. Now, understand, this is not the first martyr. The first martyr, of course, was Stephen, but James is the first disciple or apostle who's going to die for his faith. Listen to what the Bible says, Acts 12, verse 1. About that time, King Herod cruelly attacked some of those who belonged to the church. Now, if you remember back in Acts chapter number 9, just after Saul of Tarsus is converted, the Bible says that the church throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace. They were being built up and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the encouragement of the Holy Spirit and it increased in numbers. Now, now from chapter 9 up to chapter 12 now, we haven't really seen this persecution again. It it seems to have been a a season of peace, but now suddenly King Herod is, is now going to bring his full frontal assault, his rage, his wrath against the church. Now, this isn't the same King Herod that resided in Jerusalem when Jesus is born. This is one of his sons, okay? Now, remember that King Herod uh, the Great in the days of Jesus sought to kill every young male that was under a certain age because he had heard that a new king had been born in Bethlehem. Well, now it seems as if this worship of Jesus, this worship of the one true king has once again in infuriated another King Herod. And now this King Herod sets out with a rage and a wrath against the church. And the and, and, and Luke is just, he, he just lays it down. He says he comes and he's cruelly attacking some who belong to the church and he killed James. He killed him. And he says that's John's brother with the sword. 
And so we see now that James is dead. And let me remind you of James for a moment. James was one of those closest disciples of Jesus. When you think about the disciples, there were 12. And then if you notice, as you read your Bible, there were three. And those three of the 12 just were a close connection for Jesus. There were Peter, James, and John. They went up to the Mount of Transfiguration with him. There were often times where he would take Peter, James, and John alone by himself. They were just close companions and friends of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's James who gives up his life first. He's killed by the sword. Herod cuts off his head. And we think about that, it was a, it's a brutal way to die. But James dies proclaiming the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. He knew in his heart that what he preached and what he, what he testified being an eyewitness of was true, and he wasn't going to back off of it. He was going to stand on it even if it meant his very life. And it did cost him his life. And the Bible says, listen to verse 3, when Herod saw that it pleased the Jews, isn't that just a, 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 just a, a terrible statement? So, so the Jews are already responsible for putting Jesus to death. And now Herod has killed one of his followers. And the Bible says, when Herod saw it pleased the Jews. So the Jews were actually satisfied that James had his head cut off. And that shows you the heart of those individuals in, uh, who were in leadership in, in, the, in the Jewish society, that they would actually be pleased that a man would be beheaded. And it shows the further rejection of their hearts, the further rejection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Despite all the evidence of the resurrection of Jesus, there were still those who were rejecting him and despised him and actually rejoiced that his disciple had his head cut off. And the Bible says that when Herod saw that it pleased the Jews, he also proceeded to arrest Peter too during the days of unleavened bread. And after the arrest, he put Peter in prison and assigned four squads of four soldiers each to guard him. He must have really feared what was going to happen with Peter. Remember, there were times where Peter and John had already been arrested and, and, and somehow, miraculously, an angel had opened the door and they had gotten out. And they had gone on preaching. And so this time, Herod says, not going to happen. I'm putting soldiers, guards around them, around this man so that he cannot escape. He must have also had a knowledge of the resurrection. Because here's the thing, friends. If a grave can't hold Jesus, do you think prison bars can hold one of his disciples? Absolutely not. If God desires Peter to come out, Peter's going to come out. And so Herod's going to do whatever he can to threaten the church and to stop the advancement of the gospel. He puts Peter in prison. He loads it up with soldiers to guard him, intending to bring Peter out after the Passover. He had one desire. He wants to kill Peter as well. So Peter was kept in prison. But prayer, listen, prayer was being made earnestly to God for him by the church. Don't you love that? Even though Herod was doing these cruel acts to the church, the church was still gathering and the church was still praying. And friends, today, as I said a few days ago on a podcast when talking about being a Christian used to mean something, increasingly in our day, we're seeing just a, a more and more as there's just an increased hatred toward the church. And we can make one of two decisions. We can flee from it. We can run from it. We can, we can try to... To, we can allow it to silence us or we can continue to gather together and we can pray and seek God's face for his empowerment in, during these tough times. And so I pray today that you and I will make a commitment in our heart that no matter what comes against us, we'll stand for Christ even if it costs us our lives. We'll be willing to go to prison for Christ even if that is what happens. And thirdly, despite what might come, that we'll be continuing, uh, continual in prayer, never ceasing to call on the name of God, knowing that it's only by His power that we're able to live and breathe. May God bless you, and I'll see you next time on New Horizons.